Hey, welcome back to my channel, Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And in the lesson today, we're going to, or in this video, I'm going to be asking, answering a question, question number 14, which I've been asked by one of my students um, how to solve. And this is from the chapter review number one uh, of chapter one, Algebraic Expressions. Um, it's from the textbook of the, the new International A-Level from the Pearson at ed Excel, the new the P1 book. It's a textbook and it's, it's about algebraic expressions. Now, it says, do not use your calculator for this question. And it says, given that x cubed minus x squared minus 17x minus 15 is equal to x plus 3 times x squared plus bx plus c, where b and c are constants, work out the values of b and c. Then it says, hence meaning using what you just did before, fully factorize x cubed minus x squared minus 17x minus 15. Now, um, the point about this kind of question is, in P1, when you are first facing a question like this, you have no idea how to factorize a cubic. Okay, a cubic that's like this. If there was x terms only, in it and uh, there was no constant term then you could take out constant of x the, the the factor of x and then you'll have a quadratic which you do know how to factor but this type of expression you learn in p3 how to do it from sorry p2 how to do this from like from scratch how to factorize this without having any other information you learn that in p2 so when you first face this question you don't have the knowledge of p2 and the question here is a te intended in this book to be answered in a particular way Okay, because, um, you know, of course, they don't they know that you don't have certain amount of understanding, which comes later. And there are other there are different ways of doing this. Okay, I mean, um, I, I can explain that, but P1 students wouldn't really appreciate that right now. So I won't go into that detail. Uh, P2 and P3, P2 students will be able to understand uh, when you get to P2, you'll understand the other ways that there are to solve this. But basically, the way in P1 that we can solve this is by doing what's called comparing the coefficients comparing the coefficients of the different terms so for example if we compare the coefficient now we already know that the x cubed term is one here okay um, but the number of x cubed on this side and the number of x cubed on that side has to be the same because these these are equal and if you think about it x times x squared gives you x cubed okay and you know the x cubed term is going to be one x cubed you can see that when you multiply that out you're going to get an x cubed you won't get a two x cubed or three x cubed the only term that will give you x cubed is going to do x times x squared so the x cubed is going to have a coefficient of one which we already know anyway because um you know it's one x cubed there so we don't have to worry about that because they told us that the, the you know this is a one here so this must be a one here we know that already from here but how about the c and the b okay so let's compare the other thing which is the, the simplest thing to compare are the the highest power and the lowest order. The lowest order is the constant. Okay, it doesn't have an x with it. So if we compare the constants on one side and the other, if we compare the constants on the left side, you got negative 15, and on the right side, the constants have to be the same as the left side. Otherwise, it won't be, uh, you know, it won't be equal to each other. The only way to get a constant when you multiply these brackets out is when you do three times c. 3 times c will give you the only constant term. If you multiply by x, all of these will have an x term. If you multiply the 3 by these two, there will be x terms and x squared terms. The only one which will give us a constant is 3 times c. So you can say minus 15 is equal to 3 times c. So therefore we can say c is equal to minus 15 over 3, which is minus 5. So I now know, I now know that there's a minus 5 here. Okay, and now I, can, I need to work out what the b term is. So to find the b term, I could compare the x squared terms, I could compare the x terms. It doesn't really make much of a difference. Let's, let's go with the x squareds. Okay, in fact, I'll show you both to see we'll get to the same answer. So if I compare the x squared terms, on this side I've got minus 1x squared. There's no other x squared terms. On this side you've got to think a bit more carefully, because think about all the different ways of getting an x squared term. Well, when you multiply um, an x with an x, so x times bx is going to give you a b. So on this side you're going to have equals, this side is going to be x times x, x times bx will be bx squared, so you're going to have a b as one of the coefficients of x squared. And the other time you can get an x squared term is when you have a constant from this bracket times the x squared from that bracket, 3x squared, that's going to be plus 3. So you have minus 1 equals b plus 3, so therefore we can say b is equal to minus 1 minus 3, 
So B is equal to negative 4. So we've got C is equal to negative 5 and B is equal to negative 4. Those are the values of C and B. And so um, we worked that out. So then it says this is part A. And part B says, hence, fully factorize x cubed minus x squared um, minus 17 minus 15. Okay, so now basically we know from this that x cubed minus x squared minus 17x minus 15 is equal to x plus 3. Now we found what b and c are. So it's x squared um, minus 4x and uh, c was minus 5. Okay, that's equal to that. And you can even check your answer to see if it works. x cubed minus 4x squared and plus 3x squared gives you minus x squared. And then you're going to have um, minus 5x and minus 12x, which is minus 17x, and minus 15. So you see it actually works. But now to fully factorize this, we can do that because this can factorize further. If we take x squared minus 4x and minus 5 and we factorize this like we know and we learned in the chapters of P1 and previously, you know you have two numbers multiplied to give you this negative 5, so it has to be, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. And when you add them, you get minus 4. So when you add that, you get minus 4. Then, of course, it must be a 5 and a 1. And the 5 has to be with a minus because it's going to be a negative sum. So x plus 1, x minus 5. So therefore, we can finally say that x squared minus x squared, sorry, x cubed, x cubed minus x squared minus 17x minus 15 is equal to x plus 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 5. Okay, and you can kind of check it if you want to. 3 times 1 times minus 5 is minus 15. The x cubed term, x times x times x, x cubed. x squared term, x squared times minus 5, that's minus 5 x squared. And you're going to have um, 3 times x times x, that's plus 3 x squared. And you're going to have a minus 5 times, I did that one, sorry. You're going to have uh, x times x times 1, which is plus x squared. Yeah, x times x times 1, so that's going to give you 4 and that's going to give you minus 5, that's minus 1x squared, and so on. You can check them all if you want, you can expand it, but that's the answer for this question. Okay, That's a way that you probably would not use, although there's nothing wrong with it, it's perfectly fine. You probably would not use, or you would learn another way of doing it in P2, Okay, which is called algebraic long division. Or you could use something called the factor theorem a number of times, Okay, and you could find uh, the factors of this using those methods okay and so that's something which uh, is going to come later so i've answered this question from the perspective of somebody who's just started p1 that's why i've answered it in this way if you're doing p2 p3 so you say oh why didn't he do this or why didn't he do that uh, the reason is because i'm answering this for students who are starting and doing p1 and i want to keep it to their level and keep it according to what they understand right now and they will come to the other methods as we go through. This question is designed to make them think in this particular way. So that's why I've done that. So that is the answer to this question. If you want to see other questions answered from the chapters or chapter one of, uh, of the book um, of P1, then you can, um, in fact, I probably will put all of the book questions of P1 in this playlist over here. All of the P1 questions in one playlist over here. And I will put all the questions, or all the questions that I'm asked. Oh, I don't, I'm not going to promise to answer all of the questions in the whole book, just the ones that people ask me. And here I'm going to put the playlist for um, algebraic expressions in, from P1, just from P1 in general, past papers and worksheets, and also from the book. You can subscribe for my channel over here, and I'll put some P1-related paper, maybe a past paper or something on the top here, maybe an end-of-topic worksheet or something related to P1. So thank you for watching and um, I'll see you again soon.